with me for uh, a year now, and it's always a pleasure when a student starts out with a project in a course we have called 370, an intro to research project, and they start looking about how to develop a proposal for that, and then they decide to actually take that research and take the initiative and take the extra time to come and work with that. So she's going to present work she did last semester, <coughs> did a lot of work getting all this uh, experiments out, looking at the effects of acetaminophen and caffeine. So I will turn it over to Cameron. <clears throat> okay, so you said, um, my name is Cameron Blair, and I'm going to be sharing with you the research that I did um, all last semester. Um, it's basically, um, I chose this project um, comparing, or trying to see if acetaminophen and caffeine, if there were um, any effects that caffeine added to acetaminophen um, in Xenophis. And I chose this project because um, I work in a pharmacy. And recently, they uh, discontinued all the drugs that contained um, 325 milligrams of acetaminophen and over. Um, discontinued those off the market um, because they had done a lot of research that showed that um, there was proven liver damage if um, people use it over a uh, long period of time. So my thought process was, okay, if this happened, is there any other drugs that might um, add to that effect and worsen the liver effects um, in the human body for us? Um, so I try to think of things that we might take on a daily basis or just not even realize that we use a lot, and I thought of caffeine. Um, so would these two drugs create asynergism? So just an introduction, as we all know, acetaminophen is just commonly known as Tylenol. Um, it's used to reduce pain and reduce fever. Um, there's really no side effects of it. Um, in severe cases, it can be jaundice, nausea, vomiting, things like that. Um, and then, like I said earlier, long term could be um, liver damage. And then caffeine, as we all know, is found in a lot of soft drinks, coffee, things like that. Um, they can make you not be able to sleep, jittery, um, headaches, makes your um, heart rate a lot faster. Okay, so why frogs um, over anything else? Um, basically, for practical use, um, they're very easy easy to breed. Um, when you do breed them, if they lay about two to 5,000 eggs um, each time, so it's really easy to have a lot to choose from. Um, and then also, they're very easily monitored and maintained. Okay, so my hypothesis, um, and this began, was that there um, would be a synergism between acetaminophen and caffeine, which basically means that when caffeine is added to acetaminophen, that the effect is worsened. Um, and my objectives were to compare the mortalities um, of acetaminophen with and without caffeine, also to compare the malformations with and without um, acetaminophen, and then also to compare the effects on growth, which is basically like the length of the actual tadpoles. Okay, so I used a method called FETAX, which is um, basically you take two adult xenophis and you breed them by using HCG injections. Um, this was usually done on like a Sunday, and then we came in early on Monday morning, um, and if there were enough eggs that were laid by chance, um, then you would take them and de-jelly them with 2% L-cysteine solution, and then you would sort them um, between the good and the bad eggs. And a good egg, you can tell as if the cells are dividing or not. Um, and then we would put, we'd put 20 eggs in each petri dish. There were four petri dishes um, per treatment. In total, there were um, eight treatments. And then um, for 96 hours total, they were kept in an incubator at 24 degrees Celsius. Um, and then I'll describe here just a little bit also. The test solutions were changed out every 24 hours. So I would come in on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and change out the solutions. Okay, so the treatment, there are seven treatments along with the control. The control is just um, just plain VTAC solution. Um, and then there's acetaminophen. Um, we, use, we calculate these values using the LC50 values from other um, previous research that has been done. Then there are three levels of caffeine, a low, a medium, and a high, which is 10, 75, and 150. And then we added each of these caffeine levels with um, the acetaminophen. Okay, so after I did all the research, what I would do is I would come in every day and record how many um, more how many basically how many tadpoles had died every day, um, and then after on like a Friday, the very last day of the test, we would uh, look at them individually and 
see count the malformations, how many had changed um, from what they normally look like according to the atlas of ab abnormalities. Um, and then also at the very end, we would take pictures and then on a program called Image Pro Plus, um, we would measure them to see if there were any um, length differences. And um, using all of this information, we put it in a system um, that was just computerized to do all of our statistics. Okay, so this is breaks it down into the experiments, and I did four total experiments. Um, the second one, something happened, um, a tank effect is what we believe, um, which is the controls did not, a lot of the controls died. Um, so we just uh, made this particular experiment invalid. So we used the fire start in the fourth one. Um, and then right here you can see at the very bottom right here is the different treatments. This is the control, acetaminophen, and then the three levels of caffeine, and then the levels of caffeine combined with the acetaminophen. And then here is the mortality percentages. Um, as you can see visually, this is the one that we're comparing everything to. And you can see there's a definite increase in mortality once you add the high level of caffeine. So the overall for mortality was that there was a synergism between the plain acetaminophen and then once you added the high level of caffeine. And then also there was a slight antagonism between the middle, between the plain acetaminophen and the middle level of caffeine, which you can see right here. How it kind of slightly goes down from the low level right there. And then this is just an overall um, of all of the experiments combined. Um, you can just see here how that definitely, there's a statistical difference in that. Okay, so malformation. Um, basically everything was malformed overall. Um, so there's really no statistical difference in that, but you can definitely tell um, trends between how they are malformed. And basically in caffeine, you see a lot of hemorrhaging, which I'll show pictures um, momentarily. And then also in acetaminophen, you had um, tail malformations, which they just basically look crooked. Um, and then you have edema, and then it's just the swelling and the loose gut pool. And then when they're combined, you have basically just a combination of all of that. And some of them, they barely look even alive. Okay, so here is a normal looking tadpole with a tight gut pull and then no difference in the tail, it's straight. Um, and then you can't really tell it on this picture, but there's hemorrhaging right there. You can see red. Um, and that's in the levels of caffeine that increased as the caffeine increased. And then here you can start to see where the tail, when the acetaminophen is in it, um, the tails are a little bit crooked. Um, and then their gut and their stomach start uh, falling apart. And then as caffeine is added, you can see how they get worse and worse. Okay, so like I said, um, malformation, you really can't tell a statistical difference. Um, but there are trends that go along with that. In length, there was no statistical difference that we found, um, but we did find a definite trend in it. Um, there weren't really, really enough um, tadpoles that survived in the high levels of caffeine and acetaminophen for us to really be able to measure that. Um, but we did find that the, the higher the caffeine level with acetaminophen, the shorter the tadpoles were. Some overall conclusions um, that we gathered from this was there was a definite synergism between the plain acetaminophen and the acetaminophen with the high levels of caffeine. Um, and then there was an overall trend in the link. And then future studies from this, um, there's a couple of different ways I could go about this. Um, but this for later on this semester, um, I plan to do one of the two. Um, one is like a prolonged study um, over maybe two or three months where every two weeks I come in and inject um, the two drugs and then at the end um, sacrifice the frog and then I can be able to examine the liver and see if there's any change in that. Um, and then there's also um, to where I can tell where I can inject different levels of caffeine um, other than those three in order to determine where the antagonism switches over to the synergism um, between the 75 and the 150 levels of caffeine. Um, so I don't really know which way I'm going to go with that, but there are a couple different options there. 
and I definitely like to thank Dr. Rayburn. Um, he spent a lot of time with me on this and helped me a lot. Um, the biology department and then um, a couple of other people that have helped out. Um, Stephen Gardner and Kirsten Humphreys. Um, they've helped sort a lot of eggs. <laughs> they helped remove everything else. But thank you. Any questions?